Why did you get into journalism? Curiosity. Why'd you get into it? You. Hi, welcome to What the Flick, everybody. I'm Matt Achdy, Christy Lemire, Alonzo Duralli, and Ben Mankiewicz. Uh, they're going to talk about truth, which I have not seen. Ben. So truth is, uh, is the 60-minute story uh, done in October of 2004 uh, about George Bush's military service in lack of military service, uh, mostly in Alabama and then in, in Boston, too, uh, after joining the, the Air National Guard. Getting into the how he got into the Air National Guard. It's Dan Rather. Uh, Dan Rather uh, was the reporter on the story. Mary Mapes, the star CBS producer, who put it together. And this is the story I'm sure that everybody remembers of those documents that CBS used documents which ultimately could not be authenticated, and thus unraveled a story which is beyond a shadow of a doubt completely true. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you my friend Dan Rather. I'm the producer. I put the team together. We have Lucy Scott to run point. Colonel Roger Charles worked Abu Ghraib for us. Mike Smith. He was a researcher for us back in 2000. What's our next move? I might have something for the election. The president of the United States may have gone AWOL from the military. He never even showed up. Those parts of his file they didn't like, they tossed in a wastebasket. Do you have these documents? These really are the holy grail of documents. You've got three hours. We're out of time. Start out, buddy. Go! Go, 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 go! Tonight, we have new information on the president's military service. Here's to a great story. Hey, Mary, these blogs are saying that the memos can be recreated in Microsoft Word. Several experts have raised serious questions. They're gonna start an investigation. This is bad. They do not get to do this. They do not get to smack us just for asking the question. They wanna to talk to your source. No. It's bad. Our story was about whether the president fulfilled his service. Nobody wants to talk about that. They want to talk about fonts and forgeries. And they hope to God the truth gets lost in the scrum. Uh, well, I think we should have a disclaimer that this was written and directed by James Vanderbilt, who wrote White House Down. Oh, sorry. Oh, uh, right. <laughs> I forgot. Uh, I forgot. Uh, a movie uh, that I enjoyed. Uh, he starring also, Ben Mankiewicz. He also wrote the two amazing Spider-Man <laughs> right. movies. Uh, Zodiac, which, but clearly, if he's Zodiac? casting Ben as Maybe? a news guy, oh, he's not he taking it. news seriously. There we go. <laughs> yeah, that's right. uh, you know, go it, it's funny. When, whenever I review, like, the Atlas Shrug trilogy or something that comes from a conservative place, if I don't like it, I will inevitably get commenters who complain about my horrible lefty bias and, of course, blah, blah, blah. Well, here's a movie with a totally lefty slant, and I still hated it. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it, 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 sometimes you can agree with the movie's agenda and still find it ineptly made, and I would put that in this category. This is so preachy. Mm -hmm. There's so much chess beating about the importance of journalism, and we have to ask the question. We have to be able to ask the question. Like, there's a drinking game <laughs> in Ask the Question. It comes up so often. Um, you know, uh, you know, Kate Blanchett can't not be good. She's interesting to watch as Mary Mapes, the producer who's putting all this stuff together. And I think what the movie does well is, uh, as it takes us through the whole investigative process, you know, there's a lot of names and places and dates and things to keep track of. And I think the movie kind of keeps you abreast of those. Well, there much. is a giant whiteboard that they put <laughs> sticky notes and things on. Like, here, we can look at this person now. So visually, yes. Exactly, yes. I need, I need, a, I, need I always need a Carrie Matheson, you know, photos with yarn, you know. <laughs> um, although, then, but then, then you have characters at CBS who you can't keep track of. Like, there's those two female execs with brown hair who look identical, so like... I think one's what, a publicist. No, well, one's like the no. VP of Primetime and one <laughs> is like a 60 Minutes <laughs> yeah. producer, and I'm like, I never knew who was who. Yeah, no, Maybe they, they were both producers, yeah. yeah. No, that was, that was... And then you'd never know who was responsible for what. Sure. It was, that part was confusing. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I thought, I didn't think there were quite as many speeches as you did. I read, your review's good, people should read it. But <laughs> the, um, but the conversations, right from like, I mean, I said, uh-oh, like 22 seconds into the movie. Ah, you know, this is not it. People don't talk this way. This is not, <laughs> this is not, this in newsrooms, you mean? In new, anywhere. On sure. Earth. On, on Earth, <laughs> right. Uh, when they're having conversations with other people. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, it was to make a point talking and not enough uh, human talking. Um, and also, the, you know, I'm going to steal a straight point from you because that, that, it was so good. It's really hard to have a super famous person play a different super famous person. Mm. You, so, didn't, you never forgot you're watching Robert Redford playing Dan Rather? Not for <laughs> one 
scintilla of a second. But I think he's right, good. That's, that's why he I never good. play Alonzo. He's totally there you go. It he's fine. He, he's, Valley. He's, he's good. He can't be good. I think he's one of the greatest actors who ever lived. He's in my top ten without question. But I... He, he does the yeah. voice a little, a little, but, a little bit, but he doesn't. The, the hair is blonde. I'm okay with him not doing a straight up impression of, of Rather, but, but rather the capturing mm -hmm. his essence. I, I got think it, that was great. That was it, I think me. you can capture his essence. There's a point though, like Redford could play a president. I don't know that he could play a contemporary figure of his who's like exactly the same age and has been important to America for exactly the same uh -huh. amount of time. It just, it in this case, having Rather play. I mean, well, there you go. There you go. Having <laughs> Redford play rather well, was, I, mean, I thought, just odd. I throughout. think you can't. I mean, like you, you know, like Michael Douglas is Liberace. I think after a while he sort of disappears into that, and you do, you stop thinking I am watching Michael Douglas. But Robert Redford is blonde for this whole movie, and Dan Rather is po very pointedly not. So you can't look at him and not stop thinking Robert Redford. That's Robert Redford. I'm watching Robert Redford. But also, <laughs> but, but you know, maybe I'm wrong here. But you know, I mean, I'm, I'm sure in a certain part of the world that doesn't care about news, I'd probably be very wrong. Rather is. One, Liberace has been gone a long time. Rather is still here. True. Like and as doing Q and A's with Redford. Right. right? I mean, if Where Rather, if Rather played Walter Cronkite, I would probably <laughs> have. <laughs> I mean, if Redford, <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> Either <laughs> one is interesting. <laughs> um, but here's what bothered me most about the movie, and what bothered me most about the movie has less to do with the movie, something to do with the movie, and all about the issue. Look, the story's true. Uh, voters arguably knew about it in 2000 and decided didn't really mm -hmm. care. In fact, the people who broke the story first. Walter Robinson and the Spotlight team at the Boston Globe broke this. Oh, really? So and you'll you'll get to you'll get to a see much them better action. movie about journalism. Yes. Yeah. No, I was gonna say like I, I compare this to Spotlight in my mind a lot because a they're both about journalism, mm. but b they're also about their movies about paper. You know, their mm. movies about like following the documents and That's how right. do you make that thrilling? How do you make that compelling and full of mystery and suspense? And Spotlight does that so much better. The oh, script yeah. is so lean and so so efficient. This is a lot of like, as you yeah. say, extra speechifying and like you let it's Tom very sync. Write and direct it is what you do. Right. No, it's, <laughs> it, no yeah. but this is is, is so sanctimonious, and the music swells, and it tells uh, you how to feel over and over again. It does. Yeah. It does. And and because the story is relevant, because <laughs> the the right successfully, you know, George Bush took John Kerry's biggest strength and made it a weakness, and said yeah. this guy who's a military hero is a traitor. And they took a guy who abdicated responsibility, uh, uh, for, got into the guard through connections, that's clear as day, and then abdicated his responsibilities, wouldn't take a physical, didn't show up. Commanders in Alabama literally don't remember seeing him there. Anybody, they don't remember him. Uh, you can draw your own conclusion why a young man in 1973 wouldn't want to take his army physical, a young man who we know engaged in activities that he's mm. not proud of. So it's a relevant story, and because... Then CBS, may, by the way, the documents could well be right. Mary Mapes' case at the end for why they are yeah, right is a compelling that's, case. That's the one speech I liked because right. it at least sort of put everything into, but into clear context. It's true. Context. The documents couldn't be authenticated. And as the Globe learned and as the Los Angeles Times learned in 2004, you can do the story without the documents. Mm. There's a way to do the story without the documents. But then the right took this and, and ruined the whole story and made it seem like worse than that. It's not just that the story's wrong. It's that here's the left, the John Kerry preaching left, uh, uh, lying about George Bush. Mm -hmm. like, and, and therefore, if you're going to make a movie about this, you better make it a good movie, <laughs> you know, to set the record straight. And then, and then this doesn't set the records. Right. right, it's picking it, apart. It, yeah, the like the the th like the superscript above. You know, yeah, yeah. Right. Well, like I thought the typewriters that, and all that, and it became not so much about the actual it, substance of, of the issue, but and then, like the, but that scene even things. that Topher Grace and Dennis Quaid, those people together in that scene, like these are good actors, and I didn't, I just didn't buy. <laughs> these versions that they want. Nothing, and nobody was fully I'll, I'll, Elizabeth Moss has nothing to do with nothing, all this. Nothing, nothing. They're all good. Everybody's good except not this. I'll, I'll, prob I'll probably never read it now, but I bet Mary Mapes' book is probably totally. way more interesting than I, this. I agree. Just yeah. a hunch. Okay, well then what are your numbers, guys? I give it a three and a half. Like, uh, I mean, Blanchett is good, like I said, but, you know, uh, she's just wait for Carol. That's coming soon. <laughs> read, 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 Mary, read Mary Mapes' book. Read The Camera Never Blinks. Read Dan Rather's mm. book. That's great. That's great. And Dan Rather is a... Uh, you know, Dan Rather is a an icon. He's an he's American a, hero. Dan Rather is a solid, and that they have it in the movie. But his last broadcast on the CBS Evening News, where he did courage, uh, uh, and it just didn't work here. It was perfect because I think that's his real speech, mm -hmm. and I sobbed when he did that. Mm -hmm. I mean, because wow. it was really about the people who risked their lives and the journalists who risked their lives. And then he said, and he'd been mocked for saying courage, and he came back in his last show and said it in a way that was like, oh my God, that's so great. Uh, and in the movie, you're like. Ugh. 
<laughs> All right, what's your number? So Alonzo's saying three and a half. What's your number, Ben? I gave it a 5.7 out of respect for Dan. No, you gave it a 5.4. I gave it a 5.4. Even Apparently, less I respect. respect Dan a little less than I thought. 5.4. I give it a 4.2. And so our average is 4.4. And so your, your number on 63% tomato... on Rotten Tomatoes right now. Okay. Will you do a quick courage for us real fast at the end? For everyone who's struggling to find a review that tells them what movie they should go to, what movies they should st what movies they should skip, how to handle their weekend, how to manage their family's entertainment budget. I say to you tonight, courage. <laughs> See, it's not ridiculous at all. Bye, thanks, bye. <laughs>